Hi, this is Three Things About a World Quilt. I'm Marn Hansen, Curator of International Collections at the International Quilt Museum. Our museum is located at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and like museums all over the United States, we are currently closed to the public. But I want to share some of our collection with you, pieces from all over the world. During this time of social distancing, self-quarantining, and area lockdowns, I think looking at and talking about art and folk art can help us feel closer. Stay tuned as each day this week, I bring you a quick introduction to a new world quilt. So let's get started with three things about one spring day in a canoe by Rumi O'Brien. Rumi O'Brien is a Japanese American artist from Madison, Wisconsin. This is her quilt, One Spring Day in a Canoe from 1999. Thing one, episodic narrative structure. So what do I mean about that, by that? So Rumi tells stories in her quilts. And as you can see here, as you move across the surface of the quilt, she is telling the same story in an episodic fashion, snippet by snippet. So again, as you move across, she tells you another little bit about this story. This story specifically being about uh, a day that she and her husband, Jim, went out on a canoe trip uh, one spring, fine spring day, and it shares the story, uh, a very prosaic story in a detailed fashion. Jim is reading a book. He is a former professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Rumi says he could never put his book down, so there he is reading. Later, you see them opening a bottle of champagne together and just celebrating the fine, fine spring day. Rumi tells stories. That's what she does in her quilts. And in our exhibition, The Story Quilts of Rumi O'Brien, we're able to share with our visitors um, eight of her quilts. Unfortunately, because the museum is closed right now, you can't see them in person. So that's why I wanted to share Rumi's quilts with you. Now, other quilts have been made that tell stories, certainly. Uh, I have two examples here. On the left is Elizabeth Ward Hanstein's quilt from just after the American Civil War. She tells a community story. This is the story of her experience uh, at a very specific time, right after the Civil War, and in a very specific place, Brooklyn, New York. So she, tell, she shows you snippets of life uh, throughout her community, sailors, um, an ice cream seller, um, a dry goods seller. Um, and on the quilt on the right, uh, which is much more recent by Elizabeth Savanhu, who uh, is a Zimbabwean quilt maker, she also tells daily life stories. Uh, women going out to collect firewood, um, people brewing beer, so very, very prosaic, everyday stories uh, are depicted in these two quilts. But you can see here, she, each artist separates those stories very literally with sashing. So the stories are very much gridded out, unlike in Rumi's quilts. Now, in Rumi's quilts, I see a similarity to 19th century ukiyo-e prints, so printmakers uh, from Japan in the mid 19th century often told stories in series. So this is Hiroshige's The 53 Stations of the Tokaido. So the Tokaido is the traditional route between Edo, which is now called Tokyo, and the old capital of Kyoto in Western Japan. So the Tokaido is a very famous route and Hiroshige depicted this route episodically in little snippet after snippet. I couldn't, of course, show you all 53, but on the top left is people leaving Edo or Tokyo. And in between, you see little snippets of their progress uh, along the way. The bottom right is people arriving then at Kyoto. So this format of showing stage after stage of a story has a very specific Japanese um, origin. Thing two. Katsuji Matsumoto. So Rumi O'Brien's father was Katsuji Matsumoto, who was a very famous manga or comic book artist. Now, I would never want to define an artist, especially a, a woman artist, by a male relative, but it is important, I think, to her development 
She did train as a fine artist uh, at art school in Indianapolis after she left Tokyo. So she was born in Tokyo and moved to the United States in the 1950s. She went to art school, um, became a very um, accomplished watercolorist. And I think you can see the similarities here in this book uh, that shows some of her watercolors. This is a book by Rumi or excuse me, by Bobby Malone about Rumi O'Brien's work called The uh, Striding Lines, The Unique Story Quilts of Rumi O'Brien. I would encourage you to, to look for that book. So Rumi became a fine artist, and I think it was uh, because she grew up in an atmosphere of fine art and illustration and comic books, essentially. So here's just a screenshot of a Google image search for Katsuji Matsumoto's work. He was a really, some people think he was the originator of what's called shoujo manga, which is comic books uh, aimed specifically at young women and teen girls. And so there's this element of what we now call kawaii or cuteness that definitely uh, is a part of his comic book uh, oeuvre or, or work. So you can see already the, the large eyes and the, the very cute imagery that we now sometimes associate with Japanese manga and illustration. And I think that um, telling stories in comic book style, where the image after image progressively tells that overall story, can be seen in this episodic narrative structure that Rumi includes in her quilts. So thing three, last thing about Rumi O'Brien's uh, One Spring Day in a Canoe is playfulness. Uh, that is what I love the most about her quilts. She's so playful. Um, I think the word whimsical might be overused, but it definitely applies here. She takes a very everyday story, a very prosaic story, and she imbues it with um, something extra, something special. Um, and she makes, she draws you in and she makes you want to look at her quilts very closely. You can see her fine workmanship. Her quilting is exquisite. Um, her design is just, uh, you can tell that she is steeped in um, the world of design and fine art. Um, and so her quilts are, wonderful to look at up close but also to look at from a distance and finally in terms of playfulness i had to show uh, what has become perhaps the most popular quilt in her exhibition and certainly is one of my favorites i love jello it jiggles and i like to think of a subtitle for this as possibly being in defense of jello and so you can see she really she takes uh, playful topics and turns them into really wonderful beautiful pieces of art. Um, and so that is today's three things about a world quilt. Please join me later this week for more things about world quilts. <laughs>